Oh, I forgot to count. Hello, and welcome to Lawyering Outside the Lines. There's always a delay, and so whenever I start, I'm always super awkward. Um, but anyways, so Laura, it's Laura. I was like, wait. <laughs> here. Um, we were not here last week uh, because we uh, were at Virtual Tech Show, and so um, we are here today to kind of talk about our experience and some things that we um, have taken away from that and just give you all sort of unsolicited opinions about our thoughts on everything. So um, I'm kind of coming from a very biased point of view because uh, this past year I was the co-vice chair of Tech Show and so it's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun. We had to kind of pivot last minute. We made the call in the fall and I know a lot of people we're a little bit disappointed that, that we had to make that call and we weren't in person because really this conference is so amazing in person. Um, but we had to plan and we ended up making the right call and um, it turned out uh, really well. So uh, it was a lot of a lot of nerves leading into it. But um, for virtual conferences, I thought that it ended up being a really great conference. Um, it's a whole process. Our board works year round to kind of plan this and um, you know, make sure that we are providing content that you want and experience that you want. So Laura and I are just going to kind of talk a little bit today about um, the, the things we liked, some things we learned, um, and just whatever pops into our heads. So uh, first, uh, what was really encouraging to me was kind of the acceptance of um, you know, not only the virtual platform and I mean, we had a great attendance for a virtual meeting, which is, is awesome because sometimes it can be cumbersome to, you know, have to take the time off and pay for this, you know, in-person conference and fly out to Chicago, especially when it's super cold um, and from different places. So, so sometimes, um, you know, access to that conference has been a barrier. So this is the first year it was a lower price point and it was virtual. Um, so I'm really hoping that you guys uh, got a good feel for what Tech Show is and um, what it has to offer and, and a little peek inside um, because, you know, fingers crossed, we're all hoping that 2022 is going to be in person. I uh, can neither confirm nor deny that. Uh, but this year, 2022 is my co-chair year. I'm co-chair with Ivan Hemmons. And so I expect all of you to attend. Um, no, not really, but kind of. Uh, so it's really awesome and it'd be great to see everybody there. Uh, but the, the movement really of the profession towards acceptance of, you know, even just Zoom, like little things. Laura and I have been talking about forever, just, you know, in, in, incrementally introduce things into your practice um, to, to become more, you know, technology forward, more, start thinking more alternatively. And so, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of pushback. There was a lot of understanding in that. I think we've all been on Zooms forever. We're on a Zoom right now. But um, <laughs> so uh, when I was at the conference, it was great not only to hear the speakers, but uh, the cool part about it is, you know, you don't have to read people's mind. You can see in the chat what people are thinking and what they're saying. And um, so it, it was really valuable insight to me to see, you know, the questions that were being asked. People were more open uh, to you know, how do I adopt this? Where do I start? What do I do? Um, which, you know, Laura and I have been proponents of this for a really long time. We've been virtual lawyering for over six years. Um, and sometimes it feels like we're just, you know, talking to ourselves. Uh, but we, we always joke around that last March when the pandemic hit, everybody was like, oh my gosh, we need to pivot to virtual and how do we do it? And then we were like, oh, we're streamlining legit all of a sudden, um, which was fantastic because that's where we want everybody to be because we can all really move the profession forward together if we are, you know, all moving in the right the same direction, right direction. That slipped, but it was the truth. Uh, so anyways, um, that was one thing I was really encouraged by um, the openness to innovation and the excitement around that. The second thing um, I won't go into great detail about, but are um, there were a lot of cool tools and tips for working remotely. Um, you know, I got to participate in uh, 60 and 60, which if you've attended um, is kind of a one hour, which we say one hour ish because it always goes over because we're so excited. But really we, um, the co-chairs and the co-vice chairs get to at the very end of tech show kind of wrap it up with a really fun session um, and, and talk about different tech tools. And it's not just uh, technology for practicing. It's also, you know, cool things that you found just in the general world to use and make your life fun and easy. Um, so that was really cool. But the general idea is you have one minute per slide per whatever thing you're supposed to talk about. So um, 
I don't know if anybody really timed us and I'm pretty sure I talked longer than that because that happens. So, um, but there were some really cool things um, as far as, and I cannot disclose all the things we talked about, but um, for 30 days post-conference, but uh, because that was another great thing too, um, the virtual conference allowed people to actually go to all the sessions. So you pick one on the track and then, you know, you have 30 days to go back and rewatch it. Um, so maybe I'll come back and throw some of that tech at you later, but everything from, you know, like stands to make the face not look fat when you're like, you know, on Zoom. I mean, I've got mine on a box. Um, so my camera's up a little bit and you're not looking at me this way. Um, but cool things like that to like even technology that you use. I can't even pretend to talk about Microsoft because we're Mac people, but you know, Microsoft tips, things like that. So it's a really great place to kind of get all sorts of tools and tips. And not only, you know, in, in that session, but all throughout, um, you know, Laura and I were watching things that, it, that, you know, maybe were redundant or maybe that we knew, but it didn't matter because we were also learning things from other people who were doing similar things or, you know, innovative things. So we could say, hey, we're going to check out this contract, you know, editing and drafting um, software. So, you know, we walked away too. I was, remember, I was hosting one session. I was over here taking all sorts of notes, not to even ask questions. I was just like, need to go back to this later. So um, that's what's really cool about uh, conferences like that is, is the takeaway. And lastly and quickly, uh, the one thing that I missed definitely was the networking component. It's really hard to replicate that when you are in a virtual setting. There were breakout rooms, meetup rooms. Uh, you could do these uh, chats, which reminds me, I'm so sorry if you're watching person that reached out to me for a video chat when I was not available that I said I would ping later because I did not ping them. But you could uh, go in instead of just texting back and forth, messaging back and forth in this platform that we use, you could actually do a video call with someone. So. Um, you could really have and anybody you could reach out to anybody so it's nice because you could have that one on one. Um, we didn't have a lot of uh, time or um, ability to do social things, uh, but Cleo always throws a really amazing uh, after party one night um, in Chicago during tech show Laura and I go every year and it's super fun. Um, and this year we went as well and uh, just an idea if you're doing something virtually as uh, or planning anything virtually, we did, we went to the Cleo party and it was a virtual murder mystery, which was the coolest thing that I've ever done. Um, and it was 80s themed. So we were in our own homes alone drinking and dressed up in our coolest 80s gear. Um, I won my table, just saying. But anyways, uh, I, I might would have won, but some guy brought his whole family. And so there's nothing I do, but I did have shoulder pads and a whole 80s look going. And Laura was totally rocking a fitness lookout and it was awesome. Um, but we were able to go into these rooms um, and, and, and work together. So it was also kind of networking. You're meeting some people. Uh, we're in small groups of six and working together. So it was really cool um, to be able to do that and solve that. And they also uh, sent us an Uber Eats gift card. So not only were we able to do that, but we were able to, um, you know, order food while we were doing it. So there are definitely cool things that you can do, even if you're virtual. So I'm going to stop talking because all I've had today is coffee and didn't plan to talk the whole time, and I'm going to let Laura talk for like a minute. <laughs> I don't have a tremendous amount to add. <clears throat> I do want to say that I'm super proud of Brooke because she really did a lot of work as co-vice chair this year for the 2021 tech show. And then, you know, as of right the second, as of Saturday, she's co-chair for next year. And so um, I know her work ethic. I know her innovation. And so um, I think it's going to be amazing next year hopefully in person, but no matter how it is, uh, how it's delivered, it's going to be amazing. But I was an attendee and a speaker. And I do want to give a shout out for the week before, because the week before I'm on the planning board for the ABA Women of Legal Tech Summit, which is uh, specific. We, we did it virtually as well. It was two, over two days instead of one day, um, like we do in person. And it's you know specifically geared towards closing the gender gap of women in legal tech, whether that's in the industry, um, in firms, and you know whatever it might be. And that was a really good conference as well. So I encourage any of you, male and female, to look at that for next year if you've never attended before. Uh, that's a great conference, <clears throat> kind of an add-on to the to tech show. But as an attendee and a speaker, um, it, the really the tech show, it flowed very well. Um, everything was very seamless. Uh, you know, there were no hiccups, at least on that I saw. So Brooke can tell you later if there were, but there were, it was very encouraging to see the types of tracks for 
the information. Um, I, I, I've, in the past, I've thought there are a lot of heavy, you know, software tracks, um, which there were this, you know, there were software uh, tracks this year as well, but it seemed like there were more tracks that and more specific sessions that were talking about things like AI and automation because we're, you know, it doesn't have to be in a remote lawyering world that you're using technology. You also need to think about the efficiency that you have as a law firm and as a lawyer and cut down the time that you're spending on tasks and things like that. And so there were a lot of really great sessions on AI and the future of AI in intake and, and automation tools. And we are big fans of automation tools so that you're not doing repetitive document generation, you know, that kind of thing um, by hand, basically, uh, whether it's you or faculty or, you know, the, or sorry, staff that you have at your law firm. <clears throat> but there was also a big focus on wellness and diversity. And those to me are huge things that need to be in the forefront of everyone's mind um, at all times, because we as attorneys, we know that we can burn out really quickly um, and very easily, both Brooke and I have experienced that <laughs> personally. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine on the phone last night who used to be an estate planning attorney and he now works in a trust department for a large financial corporation. And uh, we were talking about the fact that his coworkers just are fascinated by how much he works. Like if he has a 45 hour work week, that that's just, he's like a rock star and a superstar and works so much. And, and he and another coworker of his that used to be a practicing attorney as well, they kind of laugh about the fact that they have no clue <laughs> what lawyers do and um, you know how to run a law firm, like what kind of work that entails. So the fact that we had a lot of wellness um, and it was practical advice and workshops and things like that, that you're actually getting really good information. Uh, and the same thing about diversity, how can we, create a more diverse environment, um, not just in our localized law firm or workspace, but also in our community uh, in a kind of a larger way. It was just a really encouraging progression, I think, um, of, of moving forward to very important things that we all need to, to be paying attention to. But I also wanna say that, um, you know, daylight savings this week, as you can tell, I just don't, care today about how I look because <laughs> I'm so tired <clears throat> from various different things but I, it's daylight saving sucks and we need to figure out how to stop it <laughs> I will say that. It's out of control my dad's a farmer and uh I you know he doesn't need daylight savings because that's just not a thing anymore but uh this is how you get me this Tuesday is just surviving basically this Tuesday but I, I want to give ourselves a shout out. I feel like if, if we don't do it, um, I mean, luckily we got a, a lot of shout outs at AVA Tech Show as well. Everybody else did it. We're going to do it anyway. <laughs> We're going to do it anyway, um, because I, I'm very proud of us. And the ABA has a memorial award that this is the second year that they've done it. And it's for excellence in e-lawyering. And Brooke and I won the James I. Kane Award for excellence in e-lawyering. Here's our, our beautiful plaque that we got. And so we got recognized and introduced uh, to basically to start Tech Show uh, last Monday. And it was a big honor and we're both very proud. And it's, you know, it's something like Brooke said, we've been practicing law virtually for over six years with our law firm. and it's, you know, every once in a while, it's nice to get a, at a girl kind of pat on the back. <laughs> so, uh, so we're very proud that, uh, to be recognized for that award. I don't know, Brooke, if you want to say anything else about it. I didn't know, I didn't prepare a speech, but okay. <laughs> I've talked for 10 minutes. No, um, yeah, it, it is something we, uh, we've been involved with the law practice division for a little while. It, you know, it is, it is big honor. Um, and, uh, you know, we do, it's, it's nice to be recognized for doing something, um, you know, obviously it, cre it we've created uh, a firm that works well for us, uh, very well being focused, but it's really for the clients as well. It's very client centric. And so um, for us, I mean, even without any recognition, we're going to do it anyways, because we feel like it's a win-win uh, law firm model for everyone. Uh, but to, you know, be recognized for those efforts, you know, obviously it does feel really good. And we're very appreciative of being honored for doing what we enjoy doing anyway. Yep. 
I think that's a great way to sum it up. So thank you guys so much for listening to us today. And obviously, you know, we get a lot of views throughout the week. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we'll see you here next week, next Tuesday at uh, 12 Central, 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain and 10 Pacific. Uh, for lawyering outside the lines. We'll be here and uh, hopefully we'll be together. I've got some family stuff going on. So um, as far as I know, we'll be here together right now. But uh, again, just have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next week.